subtle political shit this cop brother did. Excalibur. To not tell JR is some subtle making him look like a dickhead shit. It is. It's on purpose. You did the shit on purpose. Let me tell a story. So I seem someone to know. So these nerds can jack off in their fucking gaming jerk. I'm sorry. I can't let shit like that go. I cannot. Y'all, Jimmy back from Marcus Cash. SP Bray. It's time for the All Elite Recap from July 7th, 2021. Um, for AEW. When is it Nick Dynamite? It was back, yes. And oh, it is the one that guy. Indeed. You know what that means. What was the, what was the special name for it? Uh, Road Rager. Oh, yeah, that name stinks. <laughs> that name is awful. <laughs> We're starting off positive already. Um, <laughs> uh, the night started out with, because you wanted to get things kicked off with a blast and uh, get things going and get all the people excited, especially guys like me. You gotta get people on their feet. Exciting. This, it's the start. It's the first match. And it's Cody Rhodes oh. versus QT Marshall. Oh. <laughs> well, wait, isn't QT Marshall the leader of this brand new fashion faction that's super exciting that half is already missing from? That's uh, the guy that didn't have an entrance, right? <laughs> no, no, that's right. Uh, QT already in the ring, Marshall. Um, what you get? First of all, what was his match for? A South Beach Trap match. I. Listen. Some more positive in life here. And I will say this. And there's seven multiverses in which this match went horrifically and entirely too long. And instead, it just went kind of too long. And it was alright. That's to me, this was like almost best case scenario. Agreed, that is best case scenario. It's so bad. Okay. Like it was. <laughs> Could it have been longer? Yes, it's a Cody match. It could have been a way longer. It could have been. It could, have been. It could still be happening right now. Um, like if you tune into a live stream, it'd be a strap match between Cody and QT. But it's just uh, like Cody's not exciting. He should not be the kickoff guy ever. QT's not exciting. He should not be on TV ever. Um, the strap match, like to me, you disagree, but to me. So maybe at least another two of you out there. It was way too reminiscent of the fucking bull rope match that we just saw 45 seconds ago with his own brother. Like, it's a match where two guys are tied to each other and we're going to awkwardly, like, clunker around the ring. <laughs> okay, that's fair. Like, uh, to all of this. And then the dramatic, and my biggest issue was the stopping and starting of the uh, four corner matches. The dramatic, I tag three, we're gonna reset. I tag three. That's the whole, like, what's up with the match going? Yeah, but it's super, like, it's super old. It's a super old comic. Like, I like old school things to an extent, and especially how people look, but it's just such an old school gimmick. Yuck. That's carny as hell to me. Did you enjoy it, or are we still on the same page I thought the match was solid. I think that's the best of. Uh, compliment I can give it. It was well worked for the people involved. Um, yeah, like you say, like you guys said, it was the best case scenario for the matchup. The best part of the match was when we had a random blackout that uh, the commentary sold perfectly yeah, as yeah. Uh, just a part of, you know, technical difficulties and it would, you know, pay off later in the night. Um, I, I, yeah, I just think Cody is like not self-aware once again I, I have to keep saying this he's just not self-aware of how he comes across uh he's very self-indulgent but at the end of the day he was over with the miami crowd although they weren't into this matchup the oh. entire way but uh, i do disagree with the with the four corners thing because it got over in the end they for all of it not being for all of the fans not being involved at all during like the middle portion of this match the most the most reaction this match got was one two three four so at the end of the day it paid off so like i said solid enough matchup and i'm glad this feud is over thank god i do owe tony Khan or cody an apology because you told us uh a go go was hurt therefore it was kind of removed from the equation and said we got back to cody versus qt because we ain't doing cody versus fucking what's the village boyfriend 
Oh, uh, solo on the card, he doesn't matter. That's one of your few puns that don't hate you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like it. Um, yeah, that's one out. But it would be nice if somebody, like, I know all the Japanese names of every single move ever on this show. <laughs> Maybe the same mask guy behind the desk can give us an update on the young prospect we give a shit about in the ring. Oh, by the way, he had his 10th eye surgery now, so he's even more inhibited in the ring. And that's why he's not around. I do hate that that you do that. Like, I hate that. Like, he can't box anymore because he can't see. But you know what? Russ is so fucking easy, he can do that with one fucking eye. Like, what? Why would you say that? Why would you say that? Dawn Spears, the Canadian oh, god. <laughs> not called the Canadian okay, That's his thing. He's the Canadian god. I like the promo, first of all. I did like the video back because it didn't show him having an orgasm in the other That should be the southern corner of every Sean Spears fucking video package ever. And then, I know you were critical of it. To be fair, that's the best way you could ever take a chair to the face without being Mick Foley. You don't. You get your hand up as late as you possibly can, and you just take it. And it didn't look super great, but you what? What's the alternative? Did you get hit in the head? He's what? Huh? <laughs> It like there was like there was noticeable like I noticed it so I knew what was coming. <laughs> he was like he was like hi oh shit. <laughs> like the look over and the arm and it wasn't like here either like he was like scratching his face or something. It was like fuck like out here. So see the I I don't know uh, reshoot it because it's clearly pre taped. You know what? You know what? Okay, but the, you know what? They probably did reshoot it, and that was the best one. <laughs> the first one actually was like catches. catches. <laughs> but yeah, the second actual uh, thing of the night. Probably should open the show. I do like it as open. They don't want to open the promo because another company's done it for three years, so they don't. Yeah. One person can get away with this, though, is John Callis, who is hilarious. Um, and I thoroughly enjoy. This is someone who is self-aware, um, <laughs> completely so. The fans start chanting, you got fired. That was great. He completely accepts it <laughs> and goes, a real man get fired, no quiz. Put on a t-shirt. Response, that was the best response. I mean, and, and the fact that we have this hot crowd in Miami and they're bringing up something that was an impact storyline. Yeah. That just tells you we have we have complete fans that are into anything AEW related because they are referencing something from Impact Wrestling. I just, you know what? I didn't consider that. I don't think Cal's considered it either because he was, I didn't feel like a prepared line to me. We kind of got a repeat of last week's promo where uh, John Ford came out. Even Uno had swag though, quite frankly, because he was going. I was very impressed with Uno. He sounded a lot better this week. Like, think, like voice wise, voice. yeah. He sounded a lot less young. Did he do his voice? I did feel like he did a little bit of that. He didn't like the sandwich. Uh, too much of a headlock. Can I, I know I said this on AE Ramble, uh, our review of The Last Dynamite in uh, Daily Space, but I just love Kenny Omega as the evil 1980s villain. And having the corny fucking joke, what's the capital of Thailand? That was hilarious to me. <laughs> <Don't>, yeah. <laughs> I popped I popped for it immediately. I was like, there's no way we're going that juvenile. <laughs> He's like 12 years old. Uh, the elites are beating the shit out of uh, Dark Water. That's I will do. They say. And, and they should be done. Once the same thing is done, they're done. Part, I'm sorry. I'm more than shocked they've lasted this long. I'm doubly shocked they got one of the most wholesome segments of all time last week that even got some of the cynical old mess like me to buy in. Um, yeah. Come on, don't, 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 we can't break up the seven doors. Come on. Come on. No, no. Well, to, to, I want to be clear. You mean break them up from Hangman or break them up all together? I was going to backtrack some shit just now and pretend like I meant just Hangman. But no, I'm not all together. <laughs> <laughs> I'm backtracking and get rid of all of them. I'm not gonna get rid of him. I just mean we're cutting dead weight. But keep it sober. He will help me save the shop. That promo be a fucking on Wednesday. And we're keeping what's the other one? Stu Grayson. We're keeping Stu Grayson. 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 The rest of them? He gone! So I want to add to that. Okay. I like Preston Vance 10 as their muscle. I would break Anna J away. 
And a heel. <laughs> Shut up. I, I, I know you want this. Please just save it. Okay. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe you need for later. Oh, I got man. big plans for Anna J. <laughs> Hangman comes out. Hangman clears house. Um, we get that shot of him standing on the apron as a regular standing in the ring. We know that's a callback too. Insert pay per view here. Resolution 2020. Uh, which we all thought then was the like uh, a hint of a heel turn for Hangman. Yeah. And now is a different context, which is fantastic. But for those number, it was pretty cool. Yes. And the crowd is losing this ship these two together. And I some long losses I saw that. We've already seen this match, and we all want to see it again. I love the second. I gotta be honest, I love the second. Okay, I might have changed at the end. I didn't like, I didn't, I didn't like Hangman going after him once the shit broke down the end. But other than that, I didn't love this. What did you do there? The the first off the the live like I don't care too much about live crowds, but the live crowds for this and this crazy pop. Yeah. Fantastic. Like that is something they need to record, clip, and throw into every highlight package they have for AW going forward. Like the loudness of it. Like yes. blew the roof off the place. Like it was like that. Yes. Like they have something here and they need to run with it. I a lot of stops and starts over the past year. Yes. So that was the part like, oh my god, this is gonna be another one. But if it's not, and we can pull trigger. I assume you love this. You love Omega. You love Callis. You love Hangman. I, I love the, the segment last week. I love both of them with the, the wholesomeness of Dark Order talking to Hangman and the 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 uh, tease with Evil Uno and Kenny Omega. And I loved every part of this one, too. I thought Don Callis was on the top of his game. Uh, Kenny Omega, just the, the evil 80s villain. Just love everything about him. Evil Uno being the mouthpiece for Hangman, I actually really enjoy because he is like kind of the mouthpiece of the of the Dark Order and the Dark Order. Like we said last week, it's it's the story of Snow White and the Seven Doors. Hangman and the Dark Order. That's what it's all about. And he needs to find the Prince Charming. And the Prince Charming is not a person. It's the AEW World Championship. But I love the fact that Hangman did and pulled the trigger on the the buckshot lariat because at first when he came down to make the save i was like this feels too soon this feels too soon for him to be you know coming to the save approaching omega but then when they stared off with each other i was like okay i i i, I was wrong i was wrong it's not too soon this is what we needed especially because a all-out tickets went on sale this same week and you tease the all-out main event there, and as we saw, we're, we're, we're filming this on the same day, it's already sold out in an hour, so obviously this segment worked. Obviously fans are invested in the show and invested in this main event. I've said this on Twitter, I said it last week with you, Jimmy, I will say it here, one of the best built world title matches in years. It's probably in over maybe a decade, maybe two decades, because this is two years in the making for Hangman Page. To All Out 2019, he loses in the first AEW World Title match. All Out 2020, him and Omega lose the AEW World Tag Team titles, and Omega walks out on him. And now we're coming to All Out 2021. And if we get o Omega and Page, and Page wins the title, I think this is... This shows the brilliance of slow burn storytelling that we haven't seen in professional wrestling probably since Sting versus Hogan. That was probably the last time where we got a concentrated long term build for a world title match at a big pay per view. I'll give you a year. Otherwise, this is the most falling into ass backwards fantastic title match build up you ever got. I don't believe. I don't believe <laughs> that they had this, not all, but any of it planned two years ago. Maybe I'd give it to them, maybe I'd give it to them a year ago. Maybe two years ago. Hangman versus Omega is the end game. Speaking of long, long ass feuds, uh, up next was a sit down segment with JR, Darby Allen, and all ego Ethan Page. First of all, I did not know that. Rock. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the fight tonight. I did not know uh, Darby had that promo on him. Uh, that was pretty good. Right? It was pretty solid. Superb. The best Darby Allen promo of his AEW career. 
completely agreed. Uh, before we get to all you know, uh, by the way, uh, as much as people may dislike him, I hope all wrestling fans can agree. Whenever these type of head segments happen, JR's in his bag. Like, this yeah. is his thing. That's his thing. Don't niche ever. So, all of you always wanted him to be fired because he slips up once or twice. This is what you lose. This is true. Exactly. Like, like I said last week, I think that JR is better suited for the big show. So if they only used him for pay-per-views and only used him for sick down segments like this, I think we wouldn't hear all the complaints about him. I think week to week, you're you're bound to get some mistakes because he's been in the game so long and been in the game so long for a completely different company that he's going to slip up from time to time. But like you said, when he's in in and focused on something, he totally sold the dynamic of this feud. Yes, he felt like, he did feel like a grandfather telling his two kids, hey, it was like, it's getting a little hot of hands. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but all ego, still gonna, and I think he is one of the hidden gems in the AEW. I'm gonna call this never week, because I didn't like him at first. He is amazing. I wanna see more of this. I wouldn't, gotta be honest, I wouldn't be mad if this didn't end at the coffee match. Part, part of me wanted Darby to attack him, so we could delay it for another week. I love just a running gag for a while. <laughs> yes, yes. What did you learn that lesson? You fucking stop. <laughs> it's not happening. It's happening on day two of fucking fast. Did we just text him earlier in the night before the coffin match? Mm-hmm. Right. Then we could push it back two weeks technically, right? That's hilarious. Um, so yeah, I gotta be honest. I think this is probably my second favorite. Close for me, but yeah, it's, it's it's up there. I, I will say that the promo work was really strong, and I mean they have a, whole, a, a bunch of big matches for next week. But I think this should be the main event. Yeah. Agreed. Yes, fucking agreed. Uh, I want to see him uh, Eagles Edge Darby into this coffin. So I don't know if that's a finish. No, I think I mean, Darby might win. But what's that? Do you, do you think Eagles win it? No. Mostly because I would understand this making sense as Darby's like specialty match, so he should win it. At least the first one. Yeah. yeah. Fair enough. Part of me, part of me doesn't want the feud to end here though. Agreed. Oh, yeah. And if and if Ego loses, then he has to come back to more vengeance. So. You think so? I hope so. <laughs> that didn't count. You didn't pin me. <laughs> What kind of idiot makes a call for the match? <laughs> <laughs> Next was the six man tag with FTR and Wardlow versus Proud and Powerful and Jake Hager with their respective um, old men in the corner. I was just going to say that. Uncle Conan and Grandpa Tony? Yes. Um, ever since JR mentioned it, uh, Paul's in office, I could not stop looking at Ortiz. He has lost a lot of weight. He looks fantastic. Santana too. Santana looked amazing. You know what he looks like? A star. I thought this match was fine. Uh, it did bother me. Um, it did overstay as well. Everybody got their shit in, as the great Brian Cage would say. And uh, the right side won. Unlike um, Arn and Cody, it appears FTR and company listened to Tully. And this went off <laughs> splendidly. Um, I probably couldn't know about the Conan attack, though it did get over Warlow's kind of imperviousness to pain. Yeah, it would have mad ball if just no so did. Yeah. <laughs> Which one of you guys kicking? What do you guys think of the match? Uh, very solid match. It had FTR in it, so it's always gonna be a solid match. I'm proud of Powerful's in it also, so it's doubly gonna be a very solid match. Uh, War Dog guys look like a monster, so this was done all around, but I love the nuances more than anything uh, of every, like FTR for example, wearing the green trunks because Wardlow wears green like lettering on his singlet and they wanted to show unison because they are a team, because they are the top tag team. I love it. Look at you. What do you think? I thought it was a lot of fun. I didn't expect this match to be a sprint. But they were going fast out there. They were getting their stuff in. 
uh, I thought Dash, uh, Dash, uh, with Cash Wheeler, he had that great uh, uh, snap, pow- snap, uh, power slam in the match. You know, uh, reminiscent of his favorite wrestler, Randy Orton. So that was cool. Um, and I thought the finish, the finish worked with Wardlow getting the victory over Jake Hager. Jake Hager, this was probably the best I've seen him in AEW. He had, he felt, he felt very motivated with the live fans in front of him, and they gave him a hell of a reaction. So. I, all in all, this worked, and once again, I will say, like I said last week, they have really turned around this pinnacle inner circle feud that I thought I was over after uh, Double or Nothing. They've really turned it around, and I'm ready for Santana and Ortiz versus FTR, although I'm hoping they wait to pull the trigger on that until All Out as a number one contendership match. Usually, I think less is more. I think this feud has turned around because... When these teams more and more, like the like, fact they've kind of taken over the whole show, the four segments a night. Yeah, it just works for some reason. I don't know. I'm in it. Yeah, because it's yeah. not overwhelming ten people segments. <laughs> yeah, so everybody gets the mic. Everybody gets the problem. Your turn. I'm gonna try to do my best. It's a great organization, and I think shit the last eighty guys said. So yeah. We got a video package uh, from Carl Anderson uh, going on about John Moxley and the IWGP United States Championship. I will say this. First of all, the belt is fantastic. Yeah, the um, big red belt. Yes. Yes. It's my third favorite belt around. Uh, AEW Championship is number one. United States Championship is number two. The new one? Yeah, the one that's kind of sharp. I guess uh, the way I put it. The piece. Yep. Yes. God damn it. That's why I don't like it. I can't even think about that. <laughs> it's my 90s day. Yeah, man. What the fuck, B? Dipset all day, Burt Gang. Um, <laughs> and IWGP title number two. Oh, you got that I would pick the IWGP world title, the, ri- the the original one, not the one now that looks like Cody's tattoo, but the uh, the one before this would probably be my number one or two. It's close between that and the AEW championship, but yes, the US title is right there in the top three. Tony Khan fucks up again, as per usual. Because, God damn it, this is how we're bringing back John Moxley. This is the move. Every time he gets some big screw job, this man who's uh, the toughest nails and crazy, comes back just in you know, a middle match. Shit happens, so. And there goes that. How about you go do some shit about it? He lost against Stray Belt Omega, the biggest title change I've seen. I think I'm like wrestling. And God knows how long. And then fucking. Uh, he just goes off TV for weeks. No, he got kicked out. No, he's sent home for fucking. We don't want to start around. No, nothing. He just is sent away and then he comes back on the same rampage somehow. Nigga, where you been? And now the same shit happens. And now I'm back defending, not attacking to get defending my fucking US championship. Right. Then they also kind of do that when he fought uh, <clears throat> the guy from Nitro 20 years ago. Oh, like he yes! Just, like he yes. disappeared for a week or two and they just came back. He's like, John Moxley's back to defend his title from Japan. Yes, against, for Dynamite against this, this guy you haven't seen in 20 years. Possibly tough bastard. Um, <laughs> nobody knows. Oh, we don't watch. Um, ironically, though, I got that negativity, negativity off my heart. I did like the video package. Like, that was a good video package. I enjoyed Carl Anderson. I enjoyed the, the build to it. It made sense for me. Yeah. You can't like it felt and, very. And it makes sense for their Japanese title. It felt very mafia-ish. Like we can't allow him to walk around with the belt. We just can't allow. Him. What'd you guys think? Yeah. Yes. Kenny was the first champion. It makes sense for yeah. the elite to to go after the title. It plays into and it gives them an opportunity to promote New Japan's uh, big show back in the U.S. in well over 18 months uh, coming up in the summer in August. So it, it, it's twofold. It helps this whole partnership between them and New Japan. It continues the John Moxley versus the Elite storyline that's been going up pretty much going on the whole year. It seems of 2021. So it's an ongoing thread. But I agree with you. This wouldn't be the way I would bring back John Moxley. I thought that because we got this, we were going to see Moxley at the end of the night come out, and that's the end of the show. But evidently, he has to be a father. Congratulations to him. He went through one more week with his newborn uh, baby girl. More power to him. But yeah, this would this would not be how I would have booked it. Um, 
I guess like, like I, I agree, yeah, be a father or whatever. But like it felt like if you expected John Matsu at the end of the night. It felt like, like it, it felt like such an obvious decision. But whatever, for familial things. I do appreciate we're rebuilding. I don't know if there's a proper verb. They kind of been active. Ma ma machine gun Carl Anderson specifically. Like I don't need to rebuild both of them. Uh, you are a fan of machine gun. I, I'm a, a much bigger fan of the machine gun than I am over uh, Big Luke. Fair enough. How good is the action going to be? I'm trying to decide my uh, expectations. I, I, I think it'll be pretty solid. Like, uh, Carl Anderson can go. I think we're going to get shades of New Japan Carl Anderson next week against John Moxley. And ironically enough, this was the matchup that they originally wanted to do at Wrestle Kingdom 14 last year. But the, the Good Brothers couldn't make it out to, uh, to oh, well, they decided to re-sign with WWE at that time because that was the plan that they were going to do. Yeah, there you get to, um... <laughs> I'm never gonna let that go. I gotta be honest. I, I can point out, pick out a lineup, and I've never been more disappointed. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I know. There's two recaps she's not even involved in that I've shat on her. She's Sorry. a scab. Yeah, I used to try to start a union and then uh, <laughs> cross the picket line. <laughs> all the motherfuckers hold the picket. like, hey, this was your idea. Dana, we couldn't, we couldn't, we couldn't wait till we got to her husband to get this. Slander in on her. Oh, no. We got the NGF Chris Jericho standoff. Uh, I don't know how loud they were for Chris Jericho's entrance because I skipped that immediately. Because it was in my stomach. I spent at least two months of skipping right now. Longer than that. So I was going to say a year? <laughs> it's yeah, been a saying. while. He was still a heel when I was skipping. Yeah. Like, I think you hate that more than Justin Roberts going, John or Omega. Oh, no. John is one. Jericho song. And then Omega. Just all that triumvirate, triumvirate of over the topness. I can do without. Um, however, some douchebag tried to get into the ring. Um, because what do I always say? We couldn't even make a one show. No. Why? Why couldn't we make a one show? What do I always say? Russell Van Dolph. I'm saying it's one guy out of how many thousands? Shut up! The one guy who actually had guts. The one loser had guts. He went in there and got his. He about to get his shit stomped in. Um. He I, went on the road and he wanted to rage. Here's what I... Didn't I fucking give it to you before and I even take it away? Now, I know New York has it. I don't know if Florida has it. But in New York, there's a thing called the Calvin Klein Law because of the guy. Okay. Right? Don't you get banned from whole arenas when you go and, like, interfere in sporting yeah. events? Indeed. Yeah. So now, not only are you not allowed to go to AEW shows in this particular arena, whatever they're doing there... It's a it's a wrap for you. I want to take my kid to see Miley Cyrus. What the fuck? Yeah. Uh, no, I don't know what to tell you. So no, you, you dumb ass trying to attack MJF. Why'd you do that? Uh, like, how do you get banned for whole places? Like, how does that make sense to you? I don't know what you drank, but that's just sad. Yeah, I gotta be honest. I, I blame MJF for this because uh, our good good friend and colleague of uh, the True Hill Heat YouTube channel, Drunk Guy JJ, was there live at Road Ranger, and oh. he did show me the video of MJF rallying up the crowd during the commercial break and uh, calling all of them fat hicks. So that triggered him. This what? His mother was like, don't you call me a hick? And then he jumped around, and uh, Jericho had to, had, to, had to throw a punch at him. MJF is getting Dudley Boy's heat? ECW, yeah. for those of you not aware. Nice. Yeah. EC, ECW, Dudley Boys. What? Where you came from, <laughs> Yes, you said that. MJF handled like a pro. Uh, I thought Jericho was thrown. Maybe because he just got through with physical uh, exertion. So yeah. Like it added to the segment, though. Jericho being so thrown and being agitated, it did add to the segment in the end. And winded. And <laughs> he was winded from that punch. Um... <laughs> The MJF was fantastic, I thought. He, he, to be fair, he's kind of like LeBron James, where he's always looked 40 to me. Um, <laughs> not, his, not only his posture, but his face. Um, I thought he was fantastic. So he just kind of went, he fucking got that shit out of the way, said this loser, and then fucking went into his shit. Like, nothing at all. I'm here for it. And then Jericho kind of played off. Like, I should have let that fat ass beat you up. Which, quite frankly, is probably the greatest way you can handle it. Yeah. Insulting the fan and fucking and MJF, MJF and kind of kiss up to the crowd. Um, it just works. I like Jericho's mama line. Yeah, both of them. Even if I have to sleep with your mama again, 
<laughs> I'm just one that's not pointing to letters. Yeah, that's not funny. Um, <laughs> I did take a point, a singular point away. Okay. Uh, because I would have preferred that he would have went again. Because I, I, <laughs> I, I, I pop. No. For Jericho going again. What did he say? What did he say to the, uh, some idiot chanting in the audience? Why two Jake died in one time? We told him. Yes. Yes. But his Canadian ship <laughs> could still live on where he pronounces it in a Canadian manner. That's hilarious. Or is he just full on Tampa now? Like, I, like, I don't know. Uh, Tampa, he's from America. He's the <laughs> segment was a lot better than I thought it would be. Um, I think that both guys were on. Jericho had the fired up promo. MJF is just incredible. Like he, he gave us a history lesson talking about the, the labors of Hercules and that was the, the labors of Jericho. And at first I thought that, you know, I, I think I said it on uh, True Hill Heat this week that um, he said that Jericho's going to verse the four members of the pinnacle. But no, he said that Jericho's going to verse four people of his choosing. So it might not be the members of the Pinnacle. It could be members of the Inner Circle. Let's go! Because he did tease that. He did say that you made Moxley versus all the members of the Inner Circle. So I'm going to take a page out of your book. So there, I there, really love that. There is an open end to this to, to what he said. And we all know MJF. You have to remember exactly what he says because it plays into the story. I'm here for Jericho versus Santana. I was thinking with Sammy, to be honest. No, I'm, yeah, Sammy, that's what I'm here for. I'm here for the star making performance with Santana. We're still trying to make this happen. I'm here for. Yes. I'm here for. That's the rub. That's the rub he needs. Yeah, we we'll make Santana star with a kill us. Yes. Uh, um. And it might. Wait for it. He <laughs> just fucking might. Um. What do you guys think about the finish? Jericho knocking him out. Clean. It's probably one of the better times. That one of the yeah, better that, that might be the best Judas effect I've seen in AEW. No, that was one here. It was really good. I think one was. I think he's making his top row. But um. Oh, uh, Isaiah, Isaiah Cassidy. Yeah, that was the best one. This was number two for sure. Um, yeah, I liked it because you know, uh, Jericho is gonna be put through the ringer. He's gonna get some wins along the way, obviously, because we gotta set up Jericho and MJF. And I like the little nine from Jericho that said if he can't beat MJF, he might as well quit AEW. So I think that's gonna be the stipulation for their matchup at All Out, is that Jericho's career is gonna be on the line. So... Yeah, Jericho, Jericho picks up the win over MJ, uh, MJF. No. No, thank you. I think something a little more... Uh, what did he say when he first lost the Moxie? He would go away for the summer or something? Go away for three months? Two months? Something like that, yeah. I would buy something like that. A year. I go away for a year. We got a Britt Baker promo. Um, awesome, awesome fucking promo. Yes, I gotta be honest, the title reign has felt like a concentrated attack against me and the Goat Baker fan club. Um, felt like we were getting too big for our britches, too big to fail, so we've been fucking uh, brought down. Like putting her with Nyla, um, having no heat on it because it's two heels. Vicky Guerrero is essentially the star of this fucking feud. Um, however, it's ridiculous. This promo was really good. Go Baker was in her bag once more. To be fair, when is she not? Um, and I, I even love Reba's emotion here, which felt very down. Like just, uh, I'm sorry. Although I said it was an awesome promo. And Britt Baker, like you said, was in her bag. The MVP of the segment was Tony Schiavone. <laughs> Tony Schiavone needs to do every... He needs to be there for every Britt Baker promo. Because his facial expressions sell the promo even more for me. I know. They should, to me, they were trying to work. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> and his reaction to the Saudi Arabia line was perfect. Yeah, he just looked up. He's like cowered over to the side. Like, oh, no. We got to cut that? Oh, I got it all. Uh, and fucking, uh, Reba had a couple of those too, but she's fucking shaking her head no, and fucking... pointing with the thumb. Like, she's fucking... Oh. Nobody's counting. <laughs> uh, you guys, I assume, like the Saudi Arabia line? I did. I like the connection with the blood. The blood, uh, blood line. Yes. I thought it worked. How... And goes to general fucking... I said for dentistry and her awesomeness. Uh, blood would be her uh, tertiary gimmick. Um, yeah, uh, Portrait's boyfriend? 
Your unfortunate choice of boyfriend? Yes. Actually, you know what? Let us have a uh, fourth one. Fair shade to be her. Terrible choice of men. Um, <laughs> out of all other guys, I've never seen work out. Um, <laughs> y'all, y'all are so <laughs> Sorry, we just want to be the one to give her baby. Oh shit! <laughs> we just want to be the one to give her babies. Um, I didn't love it. You know what? I, I was fine. I didn't hate it. I got it. It was cute enough. It's subtle enough where if you're not a rustic man, you don't get it. So here, um, if you are, you kind of check what I had. Vince, that's blood money. But, yeah, who would have thought Vince McMahon's blood money? Uh, who would have known? Um, <laughs> uh, ironically, that that awful match last week was one of the highest rated segments of the night. She dropped facts during this promo, which she said over a million people watched her last week. They did. It was one of the, her her match and the MJF Sammy Guevara match were the only uh, segments of the show that got over a million viewers. Look at that. MJF and Bert Baker. Who would have thought? I mean, well, well, to be fair, because of their WWE background, that's why people watch um, Go Baker and MJF. That's why. No one appreciates your sarcasm. Up um, next was uh, Andrade versus Matt Seidel. Andrade can dress out like that, like mask. Believe it or not, yes. uh, comic movie. Yeah, I had no idea. Let's say, and you saw the movie. Yeah, I had no and idea. And I said you got injustice or whatever. Yeah, so, I had no idea. Just didn't, just didn't click. Fair enough. No, I don't. Um, I thought he. I don't know who that guy was with them. I'm so intrigued by that guy. He just fucking. His assistant. His 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 clothes holder. Yes. What's I forgot the guy's name. Who fucking uh. Um, drove Zemo around and um, <laughs> talking to Minnesota. That's the vibe he gave me. Like, whatever you tell me to do, I'll go do it and I'll handle it. Um, but I liked it. I still like him with Vicky. Um, I hate him with Vicky. I she, she was saying that. No, thanks to Vicky. Like, we're both Mexican. We have, like, Mexican family. I'm sure they're close. I'm, I'm sure they are. I don't want it. I don't want it. Let her be a mentor backstage for whatever that might be worth. Nothing. Well, yeah. Not just to be backstage and be a nice person. I don't care. Yeah, I don't know. We got the kid here from uh, Brody's kid. Not her doing this, would have, this would have been a perfect time to mention that his better manager just resigned for the company that did that fire her for her morals and her principles. God damn it! You should be here, and I think we would all be more into Andrade as a result of this, and you would be treated a lot better than you are with that company. But my no. paper, though, and, and you would have lost. Your, you would have lost your first match back <laughs> as soon as you went back. Did she? Yes. Three, three in, in less than three minutes at, at that. Like I'm glad I'm glad I'm still not watching. I read that shit. I went. She just, first of all, she's back, but she lost. What? Hey. That's the show I get paid to watch. Last week I had the day off, so I did not watch it, but I did find out that she, she lost it not uh, less than three minutes. That is fucking... Yeah. Like, I imagine Vince outbid TK if TK even put in an offer. But T- how, TK, do you let do her get outbid? Here's my thought. They pull this Twitch thing, or whatever fuck they think, what she does. What she does. Twitch? I think it's Twitch. Um, she's got a contract for, let's say, let's say $5. I'm sure it's more than $5. She raises a fit, she gets fired, she resigns for twice the If you're gonna take my shit, then I need twice the amount. And she got twice the amount, and now the thing's good. But like, I'm, like, would TK like blanket offer her twice the amount? Is it maybe the exposure that there would be is in so many different markets and countries that she's like, oh, well, maybe she thinks she could be a bigger star? Maybe she doesn't want to spend it. She doesn't want to spend all that money on this fucking person that's gonna bring me anyway. Why not? WWE has always been her dream to work there, and it's something that her father who passed away during 9 11 wanted her to always be in. So it's more of a sentimental thing at that. And at the time that she decided to resign with them, her husband was employed by the company, so it worked it worked twofold. So You know what? Only the last part of that I'm back. Uh, I don't think TK was even given the opportunity to offer her a deal. I think that she was always in contact with WWE following her release, and I think that she always wanted to go back there. I just think she had paid more money. I think you guys are trying to give her way too much credit. Uh, she got more money, it's just she signed. I've worked out that in love it. before. Compared to it. Maybe she wants money in the bank, and we're, we're eating our words right now. I won't be. But you guys stand on principle. I was Uh, Andrade versus uh, Matt Seidel, I thought was fine. 
I did think it was fantastic. It was a couple of nights ago, I felt like. Um, it was yeah. like a little shit ish kind of match. Ironically, we said two, two high sections with Gold Baker and MJF yeah. last week. We have two WWE guys this week. I wonder what the ratings will be. <laughs> You'll see. <laughs> uh, what was the rating? Uh, Andrade and Matt Saito were part of the quarter hour that did 878,000 viewers. Uh, not the lowest rated uh, segment of the show, somewhere in the middle, basically. Okay. Nobody t- tuned out, nobody tuned in to see another match. Fair enough. I'm not mad at it. Um, he went over with. Since I'm like, oh, 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 flat runner, yeah. Because he could he could use his old moves because that's the Thai KO. I doubt that. Yes. Or D Thai, maybe, actually. I doubt they're protecting Thai Thai's picture. Which he did. No, no, apparently that is the, the reason why. Yeah, so it's, it's already been established. Like, maybe he's doing it for that reason. They didn't tell him he can't do it because of Thai fucking Kanji. No, but, but they have been paying more attention to that because um, last week, if you notice, uh, the, the Penta and Eddie Kingston versus Young Bucks match, you know Penta loves him some Canadian destroyers. He didn't do one in that matchup because Sammy was doing it in the main event. So they are paying more attention to reusing of moves throughout the night. Where was that coffee? I miss Taikanti? Well, I usually never miss Taikanti. I'm saying on this particular show, I'm just saying in general, I think they made the decision for him to switch up his finisher. Yeah, it's, it's an established finisher for Taikanti. Do you guys hear yourself? It's like you guys stop at the first two sentences and then you first two words and then you don't finish the rest of it. It's an established finisher for Taikanti. Okay? It's and when Tom you- Brady shows up, he says, give me your fucking jersey. What the fuck are we talking about? We don't understand. I have four jerseys. My mom died. Here. Nigga. Okay, let's look at it from this. Let's look at it from this perspective. Ty Conti, considering current roster, I don't know who may be coming in the future. Okay, but Ty Conti has more potential to be a, a bigger star in the women's division specifically than Andrade has in having to overcome Hangman, Omega, uh, Ray Phoenix, Moxley, XXXXX. Okay. And I said, let's say I buy this theory, which I, I do, as a general theory, as the way you say it, I do. But that's your friend with some future uh, needs. I'll frame it this way. Over the next three years, who's going to make more money? If you sell calories? Huh? Got it. And is it that close? Mm, probably not. Um, but the to be fair, sell. LeBron James makes more money and is a better player than Anthony Davis, and he's still retiring the number 23 because that used to be Anthony Davis's number. This is what I said. You guys heard me. We could have avoided all this. I said it might have been Andrade's call to not use it out of his respect for Tagati, but they didn't come to him and said you can't use it. Who the fuck does no, that? It's Andrade. I'm just saying it was because I know you he's would. using that move. Okay. Why he's not using it. I didn't say who was behind it. I'm just saying, I just brought up the point that, you know, last week with Penta and the Sammy Guevara thing, that they are paying more attention to those type of things within the car. Fair enough. What do you guys think of that? I knew it, actually. I always pop for that uh, double moonsault spot that he does. That was the highlight of the match, for sure. Agreed. A uh, fucking great. Um, Can we comment, though, that Grado's comic book inspired? I don't love the look of Andrade wrestling in what appears to look like slacks. Yeah, I don't like it. Especially yeah, considering... I, I didn't like the dress pants. I thought he was going to do a handheld Garza and rip it off and have his regular tights underneath. But no. we didn't get that. And especially because this is like, this was going to end up being three segments in a row where dressy looking people were back to back. He saw a simple random stat. Only oh, is that is such a random stat, but this is the random stuff that only Mark has <laughs> on the Jordan YouTube channel. But um, what I will say is I felt Matt Seidel looked better in this match than Andrade, which I don't think was the point. Yes. I actually agree with that. To me, this kind of suffers from... Um, the polar opposite of the Christian Kazarian thing, which is these two guys are too similar to kind of work to get your point across, which is Christian Dawson, and you can't make it happen for Kazarian. Um, and if Andrade is awesome, you gotta put him in there with somebody who's like distinctly different from his style, like distinctly so. Like your version of, I don't know, Mark Henry or I would have reversed this and 
what was it, last week or the week before, have uh, Darius Martin beat Matt Seidel and do Darius Martin versus Andrade. We would have we would have feared having the same thing happen where Darius Martin probably would have looked better than Andrade, but at least we could have had a more dominant win for him. Whereas Matt Seidel is at a certain place for yeah. them where they want to give him enough, but he kind of outdid Andrade. I think if you're in there with a younger guy like Darius Martin, you could have had Andrade look a little bit more dominant. I, oh, sorry. I do love that, and I love that for an extra unrelated reason. Because didn't AEW just drop a uh, top flight with DDP's daughter thing on their YouTube? Whatever that show she hosts? Oh, uh, the, the podcast, I think so. Yeah, they just released that, like, yesterday, the day before, whatever, with top flight. So if you had that time where Dante Martin gets that one over Matt Seidel, who doesn't need to win anyway, and then you could have him in there with Andrade, and then now you're releasing this thing. You're featuring Dante Martin three weeks in a row, essentially. I don't think that at all. Actually, I think you guys have special. I think you guys have picked the segment in this match. I was just gonna say, I think uh, Dante Martin is so explosive that Andrade, using common sense, uh, he seems like a smart guy, um, would change up his style, and therefore it would become obvious that these two are not the same. He'd become like yeah. a bully, essentially, in the ring, instead of an equal with Matt Sido. Yeah. That's what oh, you know what that's what it was? Andrade had some really cool like submission holds and like attacking moves with the fucking uh what was it, a cloth? Yeah. A belt. A belt. A sash, essentially. Um but fucking this dummy's a fucking he's a uh, yogis. So it didn't feel like it hurt. He just like yeah. that's what he does. He stretches himself. His arms are <laughs> his shoulders are touching, okay? <laughs> he's used to that. That's yeah. what he does. Like it looks it actually looks like it like he enjoys it right now. Like it doesn't look like it hurts. It looks like he's actually stretching. And he's like, yeah, that, that feels great. That's hilarious. Thanks, Andre. <laughs> yes, Daddy. What? <laughs> what? 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 Um. Let's see, Mike said I'll say that. What? <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> uh, Arn Anderson came to the ring. Promo with Tony Schiavone. The lights go out again. I had told you that on the first match. You know? I thought this was perfectly done. We did audibly grow when we saw our hands and that guy like, another segment? I went, I said, my, my exact thoughts were, all right, he's about to introduce somebody, and I'm not going to like any of the fucking options. It's either Cody or his fucking son, who did not impress. Well, they remember Lee Johnson exists? Like, I don't want to see any of this shit. The lights go out again. Dustin Rhodes is going to come out with his blue face paint still? Uh, and it's, um, I don't know what you call it, Malachi? Malachi Black. Yes. The artist formerly known as Alistair Black or Tommy End. Yes, and Jared Paul. Um, they are Excalibur. Um, <laughs> they're back and forth, but for two seconds in a row. That's Tommy End. No, I wrestled him 45 years ago, and that's not Tommy End. Listen, I love, I like Excalibur when he talks about moves, and he can give you some good backstory. Yeah. This was not one of the good ones. Yeah. I wrestled him 40, first of all, none of the things he said right now. This can always. Yeah. What? That could be on like a, a highlight package of some sort. <laughs> the X Alice was like. It was the fact that uh, that Tommy had released the video earlier today, or earlier that day, on his social media. It was like a whole character movie of him transforming into this new character, Malachi Black. And Excalibur likes to represent the fans that are in the know, so he was representing the fans that watched that video. And, but it was the fact that you had Grandpa Jr. there been sounding either miserable or bored by the fact that he didn't know who it was. So he was like, tell me in or whatever his name is that kind of threw things off. I think you're close to what you just said. You said uh, bored or annoyed that he didn't know. I think he is annoyed that if Dummy watched the video package, he didn't tell him. Since I would imagine he knew this was coming. Why the fuck would you not enlighten me on the fact that this guy has a different name now? <laughs> Stupid. Yeah. But also... Fucking sticks. I'm a little afraid of a cover. I don't care that he puzzled 15 years ago. Like, I, 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 I understand that he did, right? And he used to be a wrestler or whatever. And maybe he had whatever accolades. I have no idea what his Wikipedia page says. But I don't care. Like, you're the announcer guy now. Yeah. I don't care who you wrestled in California in 2008. And, like, it doesn't matter to me whatsoever, especially when this is a new persona for a guy. Like, this is not even technically the same person by your own admission. There's something different about him. 
great. So everything you just is irrelevant. <laughs> awesome. I actually don't think that's much information. Uh, I will say this though. I don't really mean about it though. You treat yourself. <laughs> As for all this. This is some subtle political shit this cop brother did. Um Excalibur. To not tell JR is some subtle making him look like a dickhead shit. It is. It's on purpose. You did shit on purpose. Not to make me look JR look bad, but to make yourself look good so you can get your shit in and you go, oh, no, I know him. Let me tell a story. So I seem someone to know. So these nerds can jack off on your fucking game and nerd. I'm sorry, I can't let shit like that go. I cannot. The two people that that take ownership of debuts, Cody Rhodes and Excalibur. It's like, oh my fucking god, I hate that shit. Oh my god. Um, I, I love the debut. I thought the reaction was on point. He looked like a, a, a star out there. Mm -hmm. And this whole thing is one of the biggest blunders in WWE history. Yes. The guy was on the main roster of the WWE, and WWE forgot in 2019 to transfer him over to a main roster contract and give him a 90-day non-compete clause, and instead he had a 30-day non-compete clause, and these motherfuckers were scrambling, calling him, like, oh, we need you to come back, or do you want to go on a 90-day non-compete clause? Uh, he wants it? But I do love, he looked like a badass. Um, this, he's, wearing, he's wearing a dressy clothes, right? So okay. we redoubled down on that. But I do like the look on, uh, I'm gonna call him Tommy, I like the, I like the name. Um, I like the kicks, just by whatever criticism they've gotten. But the fact that he's carrying this storyline from one company to another, where like, yeah, I, so my eyes messed up. And they like poked my eye into this, the corner of a steel steps and it's been damaged ever since. And then now he's got like the face paint. You said Malachi means. Uh, yeah, it's play on. Sounds like it's play on Malachi. Uh, yeah, it means like yeah. dark. It means elf. Is it? It's uh, the accursed. Yeah, like he's cursed, and it's the side with the eye where his eyes messed up. And he's like, I don't like. I don't know if I've ever seen that. Like outside of like before when you could just hire a wrestler from company A to company B, and he's still the same guy without having to do the whole name change thing. <laughs> I love this. I love this debut. I, I mean this. This debut made me realize how um, lackluster Andrade's first month in the company has been from debut to now. Because this got you more excited in Malachi Black in one segment than I've been about Andrade since he came to AEW. Yeah, they fucked that up. Sorry. Uh, I think he didn't help. Detraction. Uh, Sincerely so. Um, I don't know how I feel about him being involved with Cody, who came out and then... By the way, I, I said, you know what? Fuck it. We're on a negative tangent now. I'll keep going. Um, we talk about self-awareness. Cody to me has poor um, common sense skills. Because I, we had the NJF feud, and then the, that match started off with a call level title. I'm never gonna let that go. And this one, Malachi Black, I'm in, just roundhouse kicked your mentor, 89 year old man. And your response is not to go after him. Your response is to like kind of stare and hey, everybody doing yeah, like, like, like what is this? This is the opposite of common sense. The life was like as I put my head down to look at my mentor, and then you take a kick. And it's it's that's poorly done, man. And that's just in ring lack of common sense. Let's look at the EVP lack of common sense, where he constantly needs to be involved with guys who first show up in AEW. Okay. Why is Cody Rhodes always around people when they first show up in AEW? 
Why is this the Cody Rhodes special? You saw the controversy with AEW, you gotta be in the ring with Cody. That's the immediate rub. <laughs> Cody gets all rubs from every debut ever of all time. And Why? Uh, as long as this ends with Malachi Black beating Cody at uh, All Out, I'm, I'm fine with this. Same. Cody needs an upgrade from where he was with, uh, with the factory. This is definitely an upward trajectory. He's back in the upper mid card instead of the Cody verse that he was in before. So weird. Uh, next was uh, Starks. The third guy in the row that dressed nice. <laughs> sure, that's why. Uh, sure, okay, you know what? Okay, he was dressed nice. Uh, definitely for, as for always, and I'm okay not, with that. Not, not wearing suits, dressed nice. Yeah, <laughs> dressed nice. Um, the third uh, snazzy dapper individual. Snazzy? In a row. He wanted to upgrade from Justin. Yes. Um, no kidding. <laughs> I'm not sure why this was pre taped. You said maybe you were afraid of Starks. Starks can ramble, so maybe that's why. Um, yes. To be fair, I, whoever cut this, maybe he didn't have a lot to cut. Or maybe he cut a whole bunch. Either way, it was really good. Um, I, I think it was more so just so you can cut down the Brown Cage assault into like a little snippet that looked even better instead of like. Him taking time to beat everybody's ass is just like a quick 15 seconds. <laughs> yeah, and I think they, they used a powerhouse Hobbs match on like the AEW Dark Elevation taping to segue into that. So ah. this is a nice way to kind of, without beating a convoluted way to bring Team Taz out first to lead to Ricky coming out with his own security. This was a good way to cut it up. Oh, so this wasn't even during the commercial. This is something they did earlier. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah, okay. That was fantastic, by the way. Stocks is really good, as per usual. I'm super excited for that fucking match. Case of what Monson needs to look like to me. It's been wild. Yes. I want the FTW title, and the W in FTW means your uh, wife. And I'm talking about your wife, Cage. <laughs> That was pretty good. Okay, I'm sorry. I don't know what the move is. You gotta put Cage over it. Uh, you know what? I'm, I'm not against. Because we were talking about maybe splitting both of them. I'm not against maybe Cage actually sticking around with Team Taz for a little bit longer until his face turned, and we actually remove Ricky Starks as a single star with Starks Special Security. You know what? I don't. I did dislike Starks Special Security. Yeah. I just. I did, I did like it, but I feel like Starks needs to stay the Team Taz, be the guy for Team Taz, and become FTW champion. I, I, I think. I think it would. It would be good to, to prolong the feud because we all know in AEW. Makes sense if you end with the baby face winnings, and I don't want the feud to end next week by Cage winning. I want it to continue on after this. I mean, he could he could leave with the title and just have that whole different dynamic where like he's the guy who's not in the FTW and he's got the FTW <laughs> title and is being guarded by Stark Special Security. He's running away from he's a heel. He's running away from other heels, right? <laughs> no, no. I guess Cage could be face ish or whatever, and that further disgruntles Taz, and then eventually Cage leaves, and then Hobbs is the breakout single star of Team Taz as he takes over as the main top guy for Team Taz. Man, I, I said this last week, I'll say it again. The breakout single star is Hook. Hook, Hook did more in a couple of seconds than I'm seeing from Powerhouse Hobbs. Wow. Powerhouse Hobbs, Powerhouse Hobbs, he got time to develop, but Hook just got charisma. He got the it factor. He looks like, I don't, he, I don't see it. He looks like he makes TikTok videos. Yeah, he does look like he makes the top of this. <laughs> um, I, want, I want Hobbs as a breakout star, and I want Taz to recruit a tag team as the, as the, uh, the heavies for Hobbs. That would make sense. Heavy for Hobbs? I am a heavy. What is it, Goldberg Security? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, I was going to say that, I was gonna say that uh, the heaters. The heaters are probably better. Okay. The heaters for Hobbs. Hobbs is heaters. All right, fair enough. Um, next, we've got Bunny and Blade versus... Statlander and Arch Cassidy. I know you're happy. This is where you think Arch Cassidy belongs. Yes. Yeah. Um, match was fine. I, 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 it was what it was. It was a great, whatever the AEW equivalent to uh, 1996, 7, 8 uh, European title <laughs> contenders match. I oh, know, Jesus! <laughs> would be in the Blade versus Orange Cassidy. And then two very entertaining ladies in Chris Atline and the Bunny. Uh, I thought it was such a decent psychology here too, with the tagging in and out and uh, they take this one a step. I, yeah, I thought it was a really good psychology for the big tag match. Like, 
uh, Blade laying out Orange Cassidy on the outside and then tagging in so that he can get the count out win. That was very smart. I love the that the highlight of the match was the area 51, 451 uh, splash by Chris Statlander. I didn't know she had that in her. That wow. was beautiful. So well done. Um, but yeah, this was more of a showcase for Chris Statlander, but it just felt like the fans wanted to see Orange Cassidy a lot more than what they got. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I don't tell you guys, don't like that. I don't just like, I like having fun. Yeah, I miss the, I miss the, the butcher. Yeah, I, uh, even though the blade is thrown out his butcher facial hair. Yeah. But this is, uh, for Orange Cassidy and whatever's left of the friends. Um, this needs to be a vehicle to moving Chris Daylander up, up more up toward the card in the meantime. You know what? I didn't even consider that. Yeah. You know who could benefit from settling your move up the card? Go Vega. Yes. She, she, I think Go Vega just needed a TV challenger. Nah, I'll do that. How about you pick one that's not a hill? We got a whole fucking roster of these motherfuckers out here. Pick one. Hey, get, get her out the way. Get her out the way now. So she can feud with, you know, Statlander. It could be anybody else. Down the road. You could do. Rio. Yuka Sakazaki is returning. I want to see more of her. Pick one of them. You say what he's not just for. Red Velvet's a face. Red Velvet! Kylie King's a face. This motherfucker! Take Conte. Any of them! Jay's on the way back, so we got, we got... We got plenty of time. I love that. It could have been anyone not a face. Yeah, but not a heel, right? Could have been anyone that's not a heel. You got fucking... Ugh. Ugh, I'm so good. I got to work myself up again. Um... In fact, she could have been the chicken shape heel thing where nobody's challenging for the title because nobody's good enough for a while. And you could have bought him off that way. It's fair. That's fucking better than Smuffy that. Um, alright, cool. Uh, speaking of, uh, <laughs> I don't want to go that far? Yeah, fuck, I went that far. Speaking of, um, botched pushes that throw until he kind of left, we have Jungle Boy getting his 50th win trophy, looking like the biggest of douchebags because people take photos around him. What is this, an Eminem reunion? What are we doing here? Take photos as he holds his fucking trophy, smiling, smirking in his boy shorts. What is this? You need a botched push. What is this? Let me tell you something. They did it fantastically up until the match, through the match is fantastic. Ever since that bell rang when Jungle Boy lost, it's been shit. No, it hasn't. Fucking, he gets overshadowed by Christian Matt Hardy. Overshadowed by Christian Matt Hardy is fucking at the end of that match. He gets overshadowed by Christian Matt Hardy the next week. And then he's just like a complete dickhead. Look at Jungle Boy, he did. Like a complete dickhead as he stands there with a stupid fucking trophy. What are we doing here? Not only that, not, not only is he now accepting awards, right? But he's doing it in his wrestling gear. He didn't have a match. Where's your t-shirt? Where's your pants? He had his wrestling gear. He just had those shirts. Yeah, he had, yeah, he had uh, what do you call that? Yeah, shorts. Shorts. Yeah, shorts. Random shorts. He yeah, came from the gym. Where's your shirt? You're doing, you're taking, you're, a fo- you're taking a photo off. He's watch. a jungle boy. How did he look in a shirt? He had a shirt on a couple weeks ago. He looked fine. He looked doofy in the shirt. I like him with I'm not thinking about these wrestling fans wear him down. He looks the way better clothed. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, okay. That's what he said, clothed. Close it, boy. Um, <laughs> he looks too adolescent like when he's in his gear. I just, it just made my like douche, man. Why don't you just have him banging Anna J right there, saying I'm better than you? Um, which would be a great idea. Oh, Jesus, we're back. Go ahead. Which would, be, <laughs> which would be a great idea for the new Jungle Boy push where we could finally get him away from Marco Stunt and Luchasaurus, <laughs> where we can make him Hollywood Jack Perry. <laughs> Right? Maybe even Jackson, Hollywood Jackson Perry. I like that one better, actually. With, check this, throwback, the star of the show, Anna J as his hot girlfriend, and they're the fucking power couple. Except he can't talk, and she's not super great. You get a mouthpiece that will talk for that. Eric Bischoff. I love that. Eric, Eric Bischoff. That's, that's basically Kip Sabian and the Royal Oh my god, I just thought of that. It is. Except. Kip Sabian is not as much of a star. He's a better talker. He's got more charisma. He's, he's a much better talker. Um, can we talk about the best promo on the show? Speaking of talkers, fucking Dan Lambert, please. I know you were popping. We popped when we first understood what the fuck was going on. Yeah. The second he went, I like fucking sixties wrestling. I went, let's go! I'm here for this. And I'm very excited. He just went. He fought our championship wrestling. What? Let's go! <laughs> he was just going off on everything, doing his best Jim Cornette impression. And I'm saying why it worked for me being the Spike impression. Because 
everybody in the know who's even heard a little bit of Jim Cornette, this album, knows who this is and gets the reference. What? You're not giving Jim Cornette any more fans because you never mentioned his name. It's hilarious. Hilarious. <laughs> and he put over the guy. He put over, he made drunk Sandy Guevara and Darby Allen. Like, he, he, he put over people. It was a subtle way of putting over some of the people well, and putting over AEW at the same time doing a complete Jim Cornette uh, move. <laughs> Plus, you got Jorge Masvidal and the woman's MMA goat, Amanda Nunez, on, on camera. Jimmy! Make sure you... I'm sorry, you gotta make sure you put um, Amanda Nunez fucking beat the shit of Ronda Rousey here. And intercut it with some, the savior of Ronda Rousey, just show Amanda just beating the dog shit out of her. Fucking <laughs> Ronda went from her to, oh my god, please stop hitting her. Amanda Nunez? That was Ronda out of her MMA pride. Yeah, it's home kill, all these home kicks out of her pride. That's a lie. Ronda Rousey had to crawl from Amanda Nunez's walk, so... Um, with several <laughs> in between. Main event time. 
Uh, I could have used the Eddie Kingston promo before this, by the way. At some point throughout yeah. the night. Uh, I agree. Yeah, that's weird. Um, Young Bucks versus Eddie and Penta. Before we get started, I just want to let all you know, since you didn't catch last week's or week before that, uh, go Baker and Eddie Kingston. And all you know. And then there's Nick Jack. Nick Jackson's on my list. I'm in the fan club, starting the fan club, the Nick Jackson fan club. Can I add one more? What? Alex Abrahantes. Uh, no, I'm, I'm sorry, but if we're talking about seconds, I'm not, I'm not including the people that are my favorites, but if we're talking about people outside of the ring who add a lot, Brandon Cutler is moving up that list wow. because he is the perfect type of geek. He is just the perfect type of geek. He is fine. I, wanna, I do like him as well. So I'm just like, no, fuck this guy. Mark, Mark. Huh? You and you and the four people watching Dark only know that he, he won some matches. No one that watches Dynamite knows he won any matches. He won any matches. Sixty-six percent of the program. Mark. <laughs> <laughs> and only watched by six percent of their fans. Yeah. Still exists because they use it in the rankings when fucking Joey Blow is showing up for a TNT title shot. Can I continue my love, Nick Jackson? You skipped the strut. We all skipped the strut of Nick Jackson. You guys ever... It's not a hurt flesh strut. I'm not sure what the fuck that was. It was awesome, though. It was a sick boy strut. <laughs> Billy Kidman strut. Nick Jackson is the man, and he needs to leave his brother. Sorry. Yes. Billy Dell went behind. Please. Jay-Z had to leave Dame Dash. Please. In order to get where he had to go. And that's disrespectful of Dame Dash. All right. Um, <laughs> uh, I thought this match was fine. I don't really get it. I really like this match. Uh, as you said, I think uh, Cutler probably just saw him. Him trying to keep what you away with spray is hilarious. Give him a mid-mess box. Nigga, you're about to get your ass beat. <laughs> there were a couple of great near falls, I thought. Um, Some great spots. That can be. Destroyer off the apron through the table was ridiculous. Yes. That was. And I give, I give the devil his due. Nick Jackson sold his neck the rest of the match. Matt. Matt. Sorry. Matt. Sorry, I said something good and Nick came out. Sorry. <laughs> uh, Matt Jackson continued to sell his. This feels unnatural. Like Matt Jackson <laughs> continued to sell. <laughs> he's looking at straws. I think, I think he wasn't selling. He basically he actually got a stinger. I said this! Even better! Jesus! <laughs> I said this. I said, that's okay. I said, I think he's really hurt. I've never seen him sell anything for this fucking mom. It looks like he's a professional wrestling mom. What's going on here? Nope, he's actually hurt. So, okay, so he's not as good. <laughs> so he's not as good as I made him out to be, but he's actually hurt. So, but he's tough. He's tough. Yeah, he's tough. And then you don't perform. I love, I love the ending with them, them throwing the, the thumbtacks into niggas' eyes. Dude, that is my then, shit. I don't know. Yeah. And then put it, put in the thumbtacks in Eddie's mouth and the super kick that worked for me. It's I love tough. It. It's tough. It's fucking fantastic, man. It was so different. I won't give him that. It, it, it grossed me out. It was so good. I was a little concerned. I was too many guys died, so just fucking down. Just tied the top and fucking good. Because the throw, they were not holding back on the throw. Like, no. just, here goes this shit. And they threw it over the cold times. I love Danny coming out with the Terry Fox shirt. Man. Love, love it, love it, respect it, says Terry. Hope he's still well. I really like this match. I really like the tax. I'm here for it. Um, I do appreciate the visual pinball also. That, and he got a couple of them too. That, that, was, that was probably the spot of the match. Nick Jackson doing the 450 on uh, the rest? Yes. Yeah. Well, and he had the, the rear naked choke and him getting the. They got the tap out win and they got the visual near fall. And the, uh, the visual fall in this matchup. So they protected Eddie and uh, Penta very well. Uh, we got fucking uh, a what's called appearance. Um, Elite Hunter appearance. Trent Missouri. I'm already over this. 
said every week, I can't lose my streak. Shame on Scorpio Sky. We're going to have that of the year. So I'm going to play. Um, yeah, I thought it was fine into a weird show. A good show, but a weird show. Um, this thing's going to been moved around in different orders a little bit. And it would have been fantastic, I think. Like you guys said, like, AW is not AW. To their much credit, they don't start off with promos like the other channel. But, like, in this particular instance, that would have been a really hot open. And, you know, so you just think, like, speak things around in their order a little bit. I think, yeah, that makes sense right or not. I would have done uh, Omega Man Man first. I would have gotten rid of that Jungle Boy segment. Yeah. And I would have put in a Kingston promo. Something, yeah. 15 point seconds. I agree there. Uh, uh, another, or maybe another Jade commercial with Smart Mark Sterling. Oh, yeah, was she on last week? I don't think she was. Uh, yeah, they, the tickets. The promo code for the tickets. So that's what we were for. No, that was the week. That was the Saturday show. Yeah, so she was on last week. Was that right? Because I remember it was like, yeah, and that's when my girl woke up. And it was like, right. Jade's boobs on the Just, that's just out there. Far out there can be. Not complaining. Um, Because she's that bitch. Yes, that bitch that gets me in trouble. Um, <laughs> uh, what did you guys think of the show? Overall, thoroughly enjoyed it. I thought this was a home run, dude. Third straight home run type of type of show. Okay. This right. was uh, this was a deep fly ball to right in the Yankee Stadium. I think I think if this was in Daly's place, it would have been like maybe an eight out of ten show because it was well built. You had some red hot segments. But because we had the Miami fans, because it was in front of fans outside of Daily Space for the first time, I thought this was a nine, nine out of nine and a half type of type out of ten show. Wow. Yep. Uh, I was giving it like an eight-ish because of the Miami crowd, but we're just saying that. Yeah. I'm not gonna let Tony Khan slap him there, and I'm not gonna let Excalibur slap him. Oh my god! Uh, Relax. <laughs> I'm gonna use for a while. Um, you might get blocked by that one. I've been blocked by that one. MVP! Sure. MJF! To me. Who's relative to you? Who's your favorite MJF? Man, this is tough. That's a tough hit. I'm, I'm gonna say Malachi Black. Okay. But I'm gonna say MVP. I don't think that's big. Dan Lambert would have been another one. You know what? Dan yeah, Lambert. Dan Lambert's my MVP. Both switch? No, both. Dan Lambert's my MVP. I took a second. He's my honorable mention, for sure. No, he, he gets my goal. LVP? Toy Rogue. <laughs> uh, my battery is dying on the Twitter where you two can block me like our true Simon Miller. A lot of people. Jesus. Jesus. Simon Miller is one of the nicest people in the wrestling community. Can he block you? Jesus. Yeah, he did. And he is. And I still watch the show for whatever that's worth. So, Simon, please don't block me. But uh, <laughs> I hate negative one being on my television, and he really likes it, apparently. He was not here for the slander. <laughs> Simon, uh, it's the way you said it, you're so shocked. They have a weird report for you now, like, funny me. But he said it's so confused, like, You literally, you literally have this platform to spread out your, your, your opinions on negative one. You don't need to go on YouTube, on Twitter, and respond to Simon Miller. Right. No, no, so here's what happened, right? Simon Miller... Okay, no, 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 I'll just take my phone now. Simon, <laughs> Simon, <laughs> Simon, <laughs> Simon, Simon Miller said a thing, right? And whatever, and I'm really more responding to these asshats in the comment section. But I didn't realize, well, and, and that you can actually like unlist people in the response because it's like if it's whatever, it. it's six people down. So basically, he had gotten tagged 
back and forth between me and whoever, maybe like 50 some odd times. You say you're sorry. I am sorry to Simon Miller. I'm not sorry to the guy I was talking to. Um, I stand by my negative one criticism about being on television. Great thing what they do for the kid as a company. Uh, doesn't need to be on TV. Gotcha. You're a part. Follow me on Twitter. Uh, True Heel SP3. Uh, you can follow the gang Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at True Heel Eat. Check out True Heel Eat 133 with myself, Miss Chrissy Love, Top Guy JJ, where we give you our individual top five matches of 2021 so far. <laughs> got on negative one and he lost his mind. Yeah, pick out, pick out we were wrapping this shit up. Please don't block this item. Oh, um, <laughs> I, I thoroughly enjoy your stuff. Uh, pause. <laughs> Post your comments down below. Jimmy, get us out of here. Like, share, subscribe. <laughs> what? <laughs>